Are we blessed to have the Lord? We are blessed to not have to walk alone in this life. We have been given the promise that he will be with us always. And to whatever he leads you, We can never always, we can, let me just say this, we, we don't always know how it's going to turn out. But we know the Lord is in charge. And he will keep us. He will provide for us. He brings healing where there needs to be healing. He brings strength when you need strength. And some of you have lost loved ones over the even the past year, it's not easy. God is with you. And just be encouraged. We are here to praise the Lord, worship God. The second reason we're here is to hear from God and build each other up. That is the purpose of gathering. To lift up the Lord and then to speak words that will edify or encourage, build up our faith. How many know that when you're in the world, you can take on some battles? How many have a tendency to take on some of the weights of the world? And I'll be one of the first. Begin to take and carry the weights of the world, carry the burdens that's on your heart. But I know this. I'm not strong enough, but I know this, he is strong enough. He can carry the weight and the burden, and you can cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. And he's given to us his word that we can know him, and then oftentimes he gives us a word that will help us in our situation personally in our situation. And so we've been going through the book of James, just kind of plug it along to chapter by chapter. We're getting into the third chapter. We had, just to review a bit. Chapter two, James. James is the guy who wrote about trials, chapter one. You don't have to look for trials. Right? They come because they're in life. I'm convinced that life would, would not be life without trials. It's because of the fall, because of the nature, because of sin. We have trial, we have sickness, we have temptation. We are fallen. But by the grace of God, we have given a new nature. By the grace of God, we can live above and we can have self-control by the help of God, we can have self-control in what we do, what we say, how we respond, etc. And so James moves into this little member of the body right here as we have it a tongue. And we go, oh boy, the preacher is going to preach on the tongue today. Yeah, a little bit because it's in the Bible. You know, it's, we're going we're gonna to see what James says about this. Before I read the text, I want to just illustrate to you how sometimes we say things that we m misunderstood. And this is kind of a cute little thing, so you can loosen up a little bit, okay? It's really about a... A group of cartoon characters. Now, I want you to just kind of envision this. They're sitting in church. On the first pew, the one cartoon character says, my ear kind of hurts. On the second pew, the character says, the pastor has an earache. On the third pew, the pastor got a hearing aid. And that's true. <laughs> On the fourth pew, the pastor is having trouble hearing. 
the fifth pew, the pastor got a double earring. <laughs> a last pew, the old, an old lady with a cane is walking out and says, that does it, I'm out of here. The pastor's got a double earring. <laughs> That's just a little cute example how sometimes we didn't get the message. We've been misunderstood. We've been misinterpreted. As cute as it is, it happens. And so what we're going to get at is we need help with having control in what we say. So the text reads, chapter 3, like this. Let not many of you become teachers, my brethren, knowing that as such we will incur a stricter judgment. In other words, to be teaching God's words is serious business because we're dealing with eternal decisions. We're dealing with men and women, boys and girls, young people. We're dealing with their decision and how they're going to look at God. The Bible says to study, to show them one's self-approved, need, need not to be ashamed handling accurately the word of God. So he goes on as this is verse 2, for we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble what he says, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body. How many know what this is? It's a steering wheel for a horse. <laughs> okay? You know how this works? That middle thing there goes in the horse's mouth. And this here apparatus goes up around his head and ears. And this long thing here. I was going to ask for a volunteer to put it on, but I thought, nah, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> and so you do the little get up, get up thing, and then you could control the horse, learns to go left or right by you leaning into, the, into its neck. When you want to stop, you pull back, go, whoa. Okay? How many got that? How many rode horses? Quite a few of you. So you understand it. Sometimes the horse doesn't want to obey. Right? Sometimes the horse can be stubborn. And so man learned that by putting a bit and bridle into its mouth, the scripture says, as we put, or if we put the bits into the horse's mouth so that they may obey us, we direct their entire body as well. The whole message is this. Though it is a small piece of equipment, it turns a rather large animal. So what he's getting at, he leads to another illustration about a ship. I don't have a rudder here, I thought about it. Well, bringing in a little propeller, but that just wouldn't cut it for a ship. You gotta have something pretty good sized. So, you get the idea this large ship is being guided by a rudder. And that rudder is able to turn and twist or maneuver. It's a small thing in comparison to the entire ship. But the, the entire ship is, is able to be turned by such a small. And so he alludes, he, he, he compares the bridle, the, the, the rudder, to our tongue, verse 5. Also the tongue is a small part of the body, and yet it boasts of great things. Behold how great a force to set aflame by such a small fire. And you all know, Smokey Bear commercials. Remember them? It only takes a spark to start a fire. And so this little tongue in our bodies is really meant 
to bring edification and truth and speak the word of God, speak the love of Christ, speak into people's. I'm very, very convinced that we are able, by the help of the Lord, to build someone up at the same time if we're not careful, if we're not submitting ourselves to the Lord and we get angry and we do it in our own flesh, and we can destroy somebody. The same tongue that Scripture says that speaks blessing or the same tongue that speaks blessing and cursing doesn't add up. That's what the Scripture is saying here. A fountain doesn't stand out from a both fresh and bitter water or salt water. And so we didn't read the verses yet. We're going to get them, get there. Instead of verse, it is strong. He speaks strongly. Verse 6, and the tongue is a fire, a very world of iniquity. The tongue is set among our members of that which defiles the entire body and sets on fire the course of our life and is set on fire by hell. Now, I want to say this because the scriptures speak strongly. When we are not submitted to the Lord and we're just living for ourselves, the enemy wants to begin to destroy people. And an example of this, of this, it would be if there's someone who says to a young person, you're never going to amount to anything. They just placed a curse on them. And that has happened. And happened, sadly. But to turn that around, with the help of God, we can speak into a young person's life, and I can say to that person, good job. Encourage you on. Become all that God has for you. You are becoming what God has intended for you to become. And begin to speak life into them. And what our society needs and our young people need is to know that there are people that are for them. There are parents that are for them. There are leaders, especially, that will influence a generation because the Bible says that life is in the power of the tongue. Life is in the power of the tongue. In other words, the Proverbs it speaks in that way that, that we, we have a choice. We have a choice to speak that would, would edify Oh, we would speak that which would destroy. And so when we speak that which edifies, it brings life, it brings encouragement. It wants people to respond, to do better, because we believe in them. They may not have it all down yet, but by the way, we don't have it all down yet either. So by the grace of God, parents, hear this. Parents still make mistakes, but the difference is admitting to their young person, to their, you know what? Back up the verse two, we all stumble in many ways. All right? If anyone does not stumble what he says, he is a perfect man. I don't know of anyone that's perfect except Jesus. <laughs> and so the good news is this. We are able to be a good parent because of our humility, because of our admitting at times we, we messed up and then we move on. And we role model the humility to our young people. People in general Understand authenticity, realness. People in general, but young people seem to have a keener perception. Take kids. 
I remember this as plain as day. My older brother, my oldest brother was playing an act with, with my nephew Philip when he was a little boy. My older brother would, if you knew him, he can really lay it on that he's rough and tough and he was playing, playing with him. And I thought Philip was just gonna be devastated. He was kind of growling at him and being gruff with him and Philip just stood there laughing at him. He just burst out in laughter because Philip saw through him that it wasn't real. But sad the case, sad many cases, many homes, there's not enough words that build up. If we're going to say something that would help bring, we say, constructive criticism, be gentle. Tell them what they've done right. And maybe then try to sandwich it, bring it, you know, around to what maybe they can, you can even do better. Build on their strengths. Help them with their weaknesses. Help demonstrate to them that you love them no matter what. In fact, it doesn't matter necessarily. You know, we're all concerned about performance. But let me say this. If a young person understands their love no matter what, they're going to perform their best. If they know that there is a person in their lives that's going to be there for them, no matter how they feel, they may feel like they've messed it up, that they've done their worst, that they're the worst student ever, and et cetera, et cetera. So our tongue has the power to build up or it has the power to destroy. The psalmist said it this way, 141 verse 3, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. What is he saying? Guard what comes out of my mouth. Have you ever had a moment where he started to say something, he went, oh. You, you didn't say it. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit's helping you. Or you may have said things where you say later that, you know what I said? I'm sorry the way I said it. So often it's not always what you say, it's how you say it, and you know all this. <sighs> what did James mean when he said, be slow to anger, be slow to speak, be quick to hear? That was the previous chapters. In other words, don't be so quick to come up with an answer till you've heard the person's heart. So God is looking mostly. He sees into our heart and he looks past even our faults and sees the potential, sees the product, sees the finished, able to see beyond your own self. And that kind of living helps us understand. What does it mean? It's, the scripture says, love covers a multitude of sins. Having to do with letting go of things, seeing past the sin and into the person's heart and seeing the potential. Who can tame the tongue, the scripture says. No man can tame the tongue. It is restless evil, full of deadly poison. No man can tame the tongue. But I believe God can tame the tongue. God the Holy Spirit is in the business of taming the tongue. Why? Because he gets a hold of the heart. And if he gets a hold of the heart, He'll get a hold of the tongue at the same time because Jesus said, out of the mouth. The mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. In other words, really it's a heart condition. But what comes out of our mouth is what's in our heart. You know, we're thinking on things that are negative and thinking on things that are not so good. 
the things are going to come out of our mouth because of that. But if we're thinking on the truth and we're thinking on things that we've been praying about and believing God, and I would say this, if we pray the scriptures, and what do I mean by that? Pray the scriptures. Literally take the scriptures. <coughs> and you can pray them over yourself. And you can pray them over your day. For example, I'm a child of God. I belong to him. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Start to take the word of God and begin to apply it. And then you have, yeah, you have achy joints. Hello? You sometimes hurt. You begin to speak what is we know as Isaiah 53, by his stripes we are healed. What are you doing when you do it? You're taking... You're taking God's word and you're applying it to your body, to your situation. I'm a strong believer in that, that you need to speak the word of God over your family, over your situation. And God actually will honor his word. We cannot fix people. We cannot change people's hearts. But Never doubt that God, the Holy Spirit, is working far beyond what we could ever imagine or think. When we begin to speak his word, we chime in with God is already at work. He's always working, but he excels when we begin to press in because he is for you and for his people. So it's a walk by faith. And I'm sure I don't always pass the test. Because in my sometimes myself wants to say things that shouldn't be said. Scripture speaks strongly about gossip. Very strongly about it. What is gossip? It's repeating matters that ought not to be repeated. It ought just to remain in the privacy of prayer. Scripture speaks to tail bearers, busy bodies. Oh, we have too much to do, friends. We have too much at stake to get caught up and hung up over rumors and whatevers of things that probably aren't always true. And we need to stay fixed. And if someone comes to you to say a bad word about so-and-so, wait, wait a minute. You might have to say, wait a minute. They're my friend. You might have to say, put the boundaries on. And so we just, we, we are all human. We all have the choice. We all have been called by the Lord to... You know, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were dead in our sins and our trespass, going back to no man can tame the tongue, Ephesians speaks towards while we were yet sinners, while we were dead in our sins and our trespasses. Then he inserts this in the book of Ephesians, but God being rich in love, but God, because if it wasn't for God, we would never have the hope that we have today that anything would ever change, that we would have any hope for our future, that if this was all there is, just this life, then no wonder people would just do everything and anything to try to get all they can out of this life because they don't know what's going to happen to them. Friends, how we live this life will affect our future. And the Lord has rewards for people that are faithful and do the best with what they have been given. And they will honor the Lord even if it's the smallest thing like giving a cup of cold water to a young person or a person. Jesus was very strong against false teachers. He came down hard on Pharisees who taxed the people with extra laws and 
yet they themselves weren't keeping them. Jesus was very strong when it came to young children being misled or being hurt. And he says to those people, it would be better if you were never born. Tremendous, heavy statement from our Lord. And so, friends, we have been given this gift that we can speak the word of God. It doesn't always have to come out, thus saith the Lord. We don't always have to quote the verse if we don't know it exactly. But we have the principle. We have the word of God that begins to part through a strongholds. I believe that when you go to a workplace and there are things that ought not to be, there's some things that are there's some cheating that's going on in the workplace that you come as a light and you come as a salt and you demonstrate the Jesus, the way of Jesus. I would dare say people will begin to wonder and feel conviction. And we're not there to condemn. We're there to, you know what, this is how we've been called to live. This is the norm. This is how it ought to be. I've always tried to do my best in leaving a workplace, a work site, that is, doing construction to tidy up. One time I was called, and they said, you guys left a mess. And oh, that tore at my heart. You guys left trash. You know, and so that from then on, sounded in my heart. I believe that you never know what it'll affect someone, how you went the extra mile to do your best. Does that make sense? It's practical things. It's the day-to-day. -day. It's how you, your attitude sends a message that you're not just there for yourself, but you're there to ring the bell of the Lord. You're there to sound out the message of death. We are called to walk not in our own strength. We are not here to serve ourselves. He is the one whom we serve. No man can tame the tongue, but God can tame the tongue. And isn't it interesting how he chose the tongue in the upper room it's just, it's just interesting to me because God sent the Holy Spirit on the 120 that were gathered and they all spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. You know, we say that sometimes we want to be led by the Spirit. Right? You want to be led by the Spirit. A lot of that, when you think about it, is what actions and choices we're led. If we're going to be led by the Spirit, we either are not going to do it or we're going to do it. And the Holy Spirit is able to quicken our hearts to send, you know what, it's, it's time, do it, or say no. It's, it's, this whole verse that I read, Verse 1, let not many of you become teachers. Wow. Well, then I could say, I don't want to be a teacher because if I mess up, well, wait a minute. He's not, he's not saying, don't ever become a teacher. He's saying, be careful if you're called. Work at it. You know, my biggest responsibility as a pastor, I believe, is is to love God first, not the ministry. If I love God and I'll hear from him, then I'll have something to say. It's very easy to get mechanical or professional or go, go through the routine, go through the motions. And there are people in hearing range that are going through some things that I could never understand, that only God himself understands. 
And it's to me an honor. And for me, and it's not natural. It's not natural. But he, I have to lean on him. And so for a person growing up who never heard him talk till their high school reunion, there were some kids who would, you know, they asked me to have the prayer about my 10th or 15th reunion, somewhere along there. And then these kids would come, I'd never heard you talk before. <laughs> that was me. That was me growing up. And so in some ways, I'm okay with that, very much okay with that. In some ways, if we can bridle our tongue with the help of the Holy Spirit, then we are called on to speak or give a word that it would be just come out of us, that it would be edifying. What that means is that it would build up, that it would encourage on, that it would say to your people, your family, that there is a way in which to walk. There is a path in which we can follow that is righteous and that will pay off in the end and that when we get to the end, we will have no regrets and we'll say, Jesus, we'll see Jesus. You know, it was interesting. If you follow the life of Jesus, Jesus knew when to speak. He knew when to speak and not to speak all the way to his crucifixion. Right? And Pilate asked him the hard question, who you are, who are you? And he, he wouldn't say nothing. Right? He was in control. And he knew who he was. And Pilate was afraid that he was who he said he was. Pilate was disturbed. And dismissed him. Turned him over. You see, it's not always the loudest. It's not always the volume in what we speak. It's about what's coming out of our heart. Some of the loudest messages have been in a whisper over a person who is brokenhearted. And so for me, if I knew it would break my dad's heart at home, if I knew it would break his heart, my mom and dad, it almost like put a bridle on me. I don't know what it was. I thank God for his restraint. And not all of us have had the same backgrounds. This is the way it works. The Lord starts right where you are, right where you're at, and starts anew and afresh. And he can erase and remove and set free all the junk and give us a new beginning. And we don't have to pretend to become someone you let God, the Holy Spirit, begin to become your partner. You just let him in. You know, I'm not sure about all this. And say this, say this, give him a try. Give him a try. Trust the Lord. And so in closing, let's just begin to open our hearts right now in a way. So Lord, we, we understand that our tongues sometimes can get in the way. But Lord, we want to we want to be able to have a tongue speaking that which would be edifying and lifting up and encouraging. Oh, Lord, help us to be givers of life that would speak truth and love, that would speak out words of encouragement that would build up and edify and encourage. And so, Lord, let us, let us encourage with words to our young people, to our people who we work side by side with, Help us to see things and build people up. Point them the way to Jesus. So we surrender our tongues to you. That more than our tongues, it comes down to our heart. Lord, fill our hearts. 
Fill our hearts with the Holy Spirit. And may my walk with a fresh outlook and a newness and be able to be that which we ought to be in Jesus' name. Amen.